always may have been able to tell I love personal finance. I love learning about personal finance. I love investing my money and I love figuring out ways to have my money work for me in the most efficient way possible. But the fact is, is that there are a lot of people that really couldn't care less about this topic. There's a lot of people who just want to have their money, that want to keep it simple, and that want to do as little work as possible when it comes to investing their money and keeping their money in an efficient way. So that brings us to the topic of this video. And I want to talk about the five financial accounts that every single person should have. And even if you want to keep the process of investments and money management as simple as possible, these are still five accounts that you should really consider getting. So let's get started. I have a 31 year old sister who is super smart, who lives in the UK, who has a great job paying good money, but she couldn't care less about her personal finances. She knows she has a lot of money in savings. She knows she makes enough money to live on, but as far as putting that money into optimized savings accounts and investments accounts and retirement accounts, she really couldn't care less about it. In fact, I was talking to her this past week and I found out that she has quite a lot of money saved up, but it's all sitting in a standard checking account rather than a high yield savings account or a retirement account or an investment account. So that is really kind of what inspired the topic of this video because I thought that if somebody as smart and successful as my sister doesn't know what to do with her money, there are probably so many other people out there that feel the exact same way. People that know they should probably do something with their money, but they simply don't know what to do with it and they don't know where to start. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the five accounts that you should have. And these five accounts are perfect for people who don't necessarily want to invest a lot of time and energy into researching different accounts and different investments, but they know that they should do something with their money. So with that, the the first financial account that every single person should have is the no-brainer one, and that is the checking account. Now, when it comes to checking accounts, I would say that for the most part, checking accounts are somewhat created equal. Now, there are, of course, some that are better than others when it comes to fees and overdraft charges and things like that. And I'm not going to go into the nuances of the difference between the different checking accounts across the world and across the country, because we simply don't have time for that in this video. But here are a few things that I would look for in getting a checking account. Number one is accessibility. I think that an important aspect of a checking account is being able to go to the bank and get cash whenever you need it. Even with today's society of using debit cards and credit cards for 90% of your purchases, it's still important to have the ability to get cash when you need it. And because of that, I would steer towards a brick and mortar bank for a checking account rather than a online bank like Chime or Cash App or things like that. The second thing that is a must have for any checking account is that it is FDIC insured. What FDIC insured means is basically saying that that bank is insured by the federal government up to $250,000. It's super important to go with a bank that has this type of insurance because for example if you were to go with a bank that was not FDIC insured you had a couple thousand in that bank, the bank went out of business, you could potentially be out all of your money. And that FDIC insurance provides a safety net in case something goes wrong with the banking institution. The second account that I think that everybody should have is an emergency fund that is easily accessible but separate from your checking account. The reason why this needs to be separate from your checking account is so that you don't accidentally spend it, but the reason why this needs to be easily accessible is so that you can access that money if and when you need it. The fact is, is that if you have a savings account that is with a different banking institution than your primary checking account, there is typically a lead time between transfer dates. So if you have a checking account and you want to transfer $1,000 into your savings account with a different bank, it typically takes between three and five days for that transfer to become complete and that money to become accessible. This won't work if you're in a state of an emergency and you need to access that money quickly. Because of that, I think it's incredibly valuable to have a secondary account under the same banking institution as your primary checking. That way, if you run into an issue where you need to access your emergency fund, you can transfer the money really quickly and have access to it in an instant. For example, for me, I have a high yield savings account that I'll talk about in a minute with a different banking institution than my primary institution. But I have an emergency fund savings account with Chase Bank, which is the same bank that I have my checking account with. With Chase Bank, I can easily transfer money to and from my emergency fund into my checking and my checking into my emergency fund. And the funds are available in an instant. There is no lead time, there is no wait period, there is no transfer period. The money is just there. Even though with my Chase savings account, there is basically no interest being paid on that. I think it's 0.02%. 
The fact is, is that this is an emergency fund and it's not a growth building tool, but it's just a tool in case I need it. So because of that, I think it's important to save up an emergency fund and to keep that money in an accessible location that is attached to your primary checking, whether that be a secondary checking account or even a savings account under that same banking institution. The third banking institution that I think everybody should have is a high yield savings account. Now what a high yield savings account is, is it's basically just a savings account that pays you higher interest than a a traditional checking or a traditional savings account. For example, I have a high yield savings account with the online bank Affirm, and Affirm pays a 1% interest rate on all my money that is in that savings account, versus, for example, Chase Bank, which is a standard savings account, which pays 0.02%. So every single month and every single year, I make 1% of my money back on all the money that is saved through a firm versus the 0.02% that I make off of my emergency fund, which is sitting in Chase Bank. High yield savings account are excellent tools because it's essentially free money. You get paid free money for having your money parked in that savings account. And the fact is, is that there are so many different options you can explore right now. You of course have high yield savings account through traditional banking institutions, but more and more, it seems like online banks are coming into the high yield savings game and they're offering some really great benefits. For example, Affirm is a relatively new high yield savings account that was introduced over the summer and they pay a 1% interest rate. Alternatively, you have banks like PNC that offer a 0.80% interest rate or Chime Bank, which offers a 1% or Citibank, which offers 0.7% interest rate. Now, the fact is, is that if you have your money in a high yield savings account, you're essentially getting free money for doing it. And there's no reason to not put your money into a high yield savings account because there's really no downside to it. Now the important things to keep in mind with a high yield savings account are kind of on the same lines of what we talked about earlier with the checking account. Number one is make sure whichever high yield savings account you go with is FDIC insured. That means that your money is insured through the federal government up until $250,000. Secondly, the interest rate that is paid through a high yield savings account oftentimes is dictated by the federal interest rate. For example, interest rates right now are incredibly low, which means that the interest rate that you would make off of a high yield savings account is lower than it would have been a couple of years ago. Once the federal interest rate gets higher, typically interest rates in high yield savings account will increase as well. So the interest rate does fluctuate depending on the economic climate and what is happening in the government. Now for the most part, there are a plethora of different options to choose from when it comes to high yield savings account. And it's really just a matter of choosing one that works for you and that you feel comfortable with. I will include a link in the description below of some different resources that you can turn to to find a high yield savings account that works for you. Like I said earlier, I use Affirm and I've been really happy with that service. They are a relatively new high yield bank that was introduced over the summer, but so far I've been pretty impressed. But like I said, there are so many different options out there and it really is just a matter of finding an option that has little to no fees, that is easy for you to work and to access, and that has a good interest rate compared to the competition. The fourth account that everybody should have is some sort of retirement account. And this could be in the form of a 401k, a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA, and so much more. The fact is, is that it is never too early to start saving for your retirement. And there are a lot of great accounts you can start contributing to today that can assist you in saving for your retirement later on down the road. A 401k, for example, is a amazing option, especially if you work for a company that does 401k matching. With a 401k, you can contribute a monthly or yearly amount. And depending on the policies with your company, some companies will match that contribution up to a certain amount. And if you work for a company that does 401k matching, then you should absolutely max out the amount of money that they are matching because that's free money and free money is the best type of money at the end of the day. Alternatively, a great retirement account option is an IRA, but more specifically, a Roth IRA. Now, what an IRA is, it's an individual retirement account. And what a Roth IRA is, is it's a retirement account that uses pre-tax dollars, which means that whenever you put money into the Roth IRA, you're paying taxes on it at that point. And then whenever you go and you withdraw the money later on down the road, you're not taxed at that point, which means that all of the gains that that IRA sees is essentially tax-free. Now with a Roth IRA, there is a limit to how much you can contribute per year. That limit as of 2020 is $6,000, which means that the max amount of contributions you can make in a calendar year is $6,000. Now there are a number of different types of retirement accounts out there, and there are different types for different types of people who are looking for different types of things. But these two different accounts, the Roth IRA and the 401k are kind of the two simplest forms. And if you're somebody who's wanting to keep your finances super simple, then these are two great 
great options to explore. Keep in mind though that the 401k is oftentimes offered through your employer. So if you work for a nine to five or for a corporation, I would make sure to talk to your job about their 401k program and whether or not they do 401k matching. And whether or not your work does 401k matching, I would absolutely still look into a Roth IRA because that is an excellent option to pursue. And the next financial account that I think everybody should have is more of an optional one because a lot of people are intimidated by this type of account and that is a traditional investment account through a stock brokerage. Something like Fidelity, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, and more. The fact is, is that regardless of whether or not you're interested in investing, there are real investment opportunities out there that could be considered set it and forget it investments. Meaning that you make the investment and then you don't really have to worry about it until later on down the road. In fact, I would argue that these types of investments are the best types of investments. The stock market historically has gone up year over year in history and statistics would say that if you put money into the market today, chances are that if you take that money out 20, 30 years down the line, you will have made money making that investment. And there are a number of different investments that you could pursue as somebody who wants to set it and forget it. Things like mutual funds, index funds, even going with investments through larger companies or dividend yielding stocks like Johnson & Johnson, Tesla, Apple, 3M, and so much more. The fact is, is that there are a number of different options that you could pursue, and these are good options to pursue even with a somewhat lack of knowledge into the market. If you are somebody who is interested in investing in the market, but you aren't necessarily interested in learning about the market, I would absolutely look at hiring some sort of financial advisor. Typically, I don't condone financial advisors because I think that for the most part, the knowledge that financial advisors have is knowledge that anybody could learn if they wanted to learn it. But I also acknowledge the fact that not everybody is interested in learning about it. And if you could pay a fee or pay a certain amount of money to have an expert make your investments for you or at least make some good suggestions, I think that it would be worthwhile if you're somebody who just has no interest in doing the research on your own. Financial education is important and whether or not you're interested in learning about the nuances of a high yield savings account versus a traditional savings account or whether or not you want to learn about investments and the difference between different types of investments, I think that those fine details are less important. But having a basic understanding of the difference between a retirement Environment versus a investment account or a savings account versus a checking account. Those details are important and they can really make the difference between being financially set in your 60s and 70s and struggling for your entire life. I believe that these five accounts that I've talked about today is really all you need in order to have a basic structure to your financial success. And if you pursue these five different accounts, if you educate yourself on the basic information that you need to know, if you contribute to these accounts on a regular basis, I believe that it will be a huge game changer to your long-term financial success. But you guys, I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear whether or not you agree or disagree with what I've talked about in this video. If you have other types of accounts or investments or different types of strategies that you would go about rather than what I've talked about, I would love to hear your comments below. So make sure to leave a comment. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, or hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.